Okay, another question we can ask is why use MDNs? And there are also other types of neural density estimators. And indeed in uh, the first algorithm, they had to use MDN for reasons that we will see, but uh, in the next algorithms, they overcame the problem. And so actually nowadays you can use any neural density estimator. So for now, we will see what is the problem that uh, prevented them from using anything else, but note that uh, actually now you can use everything. Okay, so the problem only arises if we want to use the algorithm in a sequential manner. And usually we would want that because it really improves uh, the efficiency. You don't need to capture the uh, total structure between X and theta. You really only want to try and capture that structure around the X observed that you actually seen because you only want the posterior that you had. Trying to find the entire structure is a bit, will probably take too much uh, effort and too much computation. So you want to do it in a sequential manner, but if you do it in a sequential manner where you take the previous round um, posterior and you want to use it as a prior or as a proposal for the points in the next round, well, what you would get is no longer the true posterior. You would get that the posterior is equal to this using the proposal prior instead of the actual prior. So in order to get back to the true uh, posterior, you have to correct for this. And what you do is you multiply your final uh, GMM, yeah, the final distribution that you found by this correction term. You uh, divide by the proposal that you used and you multiply by the actual prior. And now, if you can do this analytically, yeah, this is a GMM. And if these two are something easy, then you can compute this analytically and no problem. But if you want that this will be something else and these will be also something else, well, you might run into a problem and you won't be able to compute this analytically. So indeed, this was the reason why Papamakarius and Murray uh, limited their density estimator, yeah, their Q to be a GMM. And then uh, they limited the proposal to be a Gaussian and the prior to be either a Gaussian or a uniform. If it's a uniform, it doesn't even matter. We can just uh, ignore it when uh, trying to normalize the, the final uh, posterior. Uh, if it's a Gaussian, then a Gaussian times a Gaussian divided by a Gaussian, everything will be in the end a GMM. You will still get a GMM. There is only one problem. And, and if this Gaussian has lower variance than let's say even one of the Gaussians in the GMM here, then you will get something that is not a valid distribution anymore. We can see this here, for example. Let's suppose that uh, the proposal prior and uh, one of the GMM components had exactly the same mean, yeah? So let's ignore the X minus mu and just call it A, but one had this variance and the other had this variance. And let's ignore also normalizing constants and throw them away. Then if we calculate it, we get that, well, we want this to be positive, right? Because we want the overall thing to be negative. Otherwise, it's not a valid distribution. So if we want this to be positive, it means that we want that the variance of the proposal uh, to be bigger than the variance of the GMM. Okay, so this is a some um, problem which might not always happen. And indeed in the paper and following papers, they mentioned this instability to the algorithm that it could be that the algorithm reaches some points where the proposal prior actually has less variance than the GMM and then the algorithm breaks down. But in most cases it won't and it will work. Uh, so if you keep uh, the dens neural density estimator, the Q to be a GMM, and if you only use a Gaussian proposal and a Gaussian or uniform prior, then you can use this algorithm. Then Lukman and associates from the second group in Tübingen came and they circumvent past this problem uh, by just modifying the loss. So instead of uh, using different proposal priors, getting some GMM in the end and then multiplying it by a correction, they say, let's put this correction already in the loss, okay? So if you put the correction already in the loss and you take instead 
of just the negative log likelihood and uh, you weight it by this correction term, then they prove that minimizing this error gives you the correct posterior. And so let's see how this, the math behind this works. Well, this term over here is just an approximation. Yeah, if you take n to infinity of the expectation of this term, uh, when you draw from the proposal prior and you simulate it from those uh, thetas that you took. So now if we develop this and we write the integral, we will have to multiply this by this. And so this and this will cancel. And then we could treat this and this as the distribution over which we are taking the expectation. So we will reach this thing over here. And now this is just the joint break, broken down in one way. We could also break down the other way. We can say it's the probability of X and the probability of theta given that X. And now we can add a lot of terms that cancel out, yeah? So uh, this and this cancels out and this and this cancels out, but I want to add them just for the sake of it. And also all these terms don't depend on the Ws that we are optimizing of the neural network. And now let's uh, take these two terms and put them in uh, purple. Let's take these two terms and put them in blue. And this term we can leave uh, on this side. Yeah, and because of linearity of expectation, we can also separate it that the blue and the uh, purple comes here and the uh, uh, red comes here. And we can also, because of the law of logarithms, already join the logarithms here and here. And now notice that this whole thing is just the definition of the callback Leibler divergence, right? Because this is, let's say, instead of calling it P of X, P theta of X, we can just call it P. And so this is also P and this is Q. And so we have, uh, this whole thing is just the integral of P times uh, log of P divided by Q, which is exactly the callback Leibler divergence. And this thing over here is just a constant term. It doesn't depend on the W, on the weights. So if we want to minimize it with regards to the weights, we, we only can change this thing. This is the knob that we can turn in order to change this quantity, and we want to minimize it. And so the minimization of the callback Leibler divergence is when P is equal to Q, and these things are exact, so it will be minimized when this thing will be equal to this thing, meaning when the neural density estimator that we have, the GMM, or something else in this case, will be equal to the true posterior. So using these weights, these correction weights in the loss, uh, really circumvents the entire problem and we no longer have to limit ourselves to a Gaussian mixture model or to a Gaussian prior. We can use any NDE that we want and any proposal that we want. And we can use the last round posterior as the current round proposal. So if we do it sequentially, then we finish the first round, we get a posterior, we use it as the proposal or the proposal prior for the next round. We get the new posterior, we use, we use that as the proposal for the next round. And it doesn't matter which proposal we are using, uh, we are always getting in the end something that is the true posterior or as close as it gets to the true posterior using our algorithm. There are also additional improvements in uh, this SNPEB uh, paper. Uh, you can also use weights, you can use some kernel, just like in the uh, regular regression adjustment. Uh, both the papers, they don't use just regular uh, neural networks. They use um, what I guess you can call Bayesian neural networks. They treat the weights as if they have their own distributions, but I won't touch upon this right now. Uh, there's also other cool tricks that uh, the second paper does uh, specifically for the problems of neural networks, which is how to um, learn automatically a summary statistics. So you could add some additional layers to before the uh, MDN neural network or any other neural density uh, estimator network. And these uh, layers, they don't have to be a feedforward neural network, a dense layer or a linear layer. They can also be a convolutional neural network or a recurrent neural network, et cetera.